Mark DeCode here from Resourceful Designer. Does this sound familiar to you? A client hires you to design a logo. You spend hours coming up with different ideas. Some of them you'll discard, some of them you'll explore further, before finally coming up with the perfect logo for your client. You present it to them, they love it, high fives all around, give yourself a pat on the back for a job well done. But the job's not over yet. Now, you have to spend the time packaging up that logo in order to give it to the client. That means coming up with dozens and dozens of different files, different file formats, different colors, different layouts, depending on the logo you designed, and that can take lots of time. It could take 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour's worth of your time just saving file after file after file. Well, today I'm gonna to share with you Logo Package Express. It's an Adobe Illustrator extension that cuts that down drastically. According to the website, it can save you 10 times the time saving for doing this project. Now, I know you don't wanna hear me talk about it, so let's head on over to Adobe Illustrator and I'll give you a walkthrough of how the extension works. So here we are in Adobe Illustrator. Now, please don't laugh at the logo I have here. This is something I whipped up in about three minutes in order to do this demo. It's definitely not gonna win me any logo awards or that, but it's good enough for this purpose. Now, once you've installed Logo Package Express, and just a note here, you do need Adobe Illustrator 2018 or newer for this to work. It will not work on the CS version or any older version of Adobe Illustrator. But once it's installed, you'll find it under Windows, Extensions, Logo Package Express, and it opens up in this palette here. Now I'm gonna take the palette and I'm gonna drag it over and dock it to the side here just for convenience. And I'm just gonna go over a little bit of this before I actually show you how it works. Now in the right hand side, if I click on this, there is a video that was put here by the creator of the extension. So this is very convenient. It's only a short six minute video to show you how to use it. So if you don't remember, you can watch this. The only thing that I have issue that I have with this video is that when you do click on full screen, because this is really small, it goes full screen within the palette. So it's still very small. Now, luckily, I do believe that the um, it, you click on more tutorials, it'll take you to the website. I think this video is on the website. So you can watch it there. But that's on the last tab. Now the next tab is the settings tab. And this one here, once you set it, you're pretty well not gonna do very much else with it. I'll just go through it quickly here. Include Pantone conversion. It allow you to pick whether you want uncoded colors, coded colors, both, neither, whatever you want. And what this means is when you create your logo, if it's created in CMYK or in RGB, it'll automatically pick the closest Pantone color to those RGB or CMYK values. And I must say, it does a really, really good job at it. Now, that's if you have it set up to automatic, it'll automatically find those for you. Now, if you select it on manual, it'll create a logo for the Pantone colors, but it won't actually find the colors for you. You will have to go in and select and color them the individual Pantone colors that you have. So for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna leave it on automatic. Um, I'm not really sure with this inversion, invert all components and thresholds, I'm not sure about that one, so I just don't touch it. And here's the file formats for print files and for web. By default, for some reason, EPS is off. I turn EPS on because I like supplying an EPS file to my clients as well. And you can adjust the resolution of stuff. So if you want to give them a 72 PPI, uh, 144 or 300. So those are the settings. Over here, this is just a reset. You click on that and it resets to the default. This is the start package. And the last one here is if you're in any other uh, menu, you can just click here and get back. Now, the way that the extension works is you highlight your logo. So let's highlight the logo here. And I'm going to say set logo. And there you go. You see the package here has changed on the side. It's actually created a new tab. So this over here is the tab that I had that I selected the logo. It created a new tab with the logo in it and it added here logo. Now you can just build the logos from here or you can break the logo apart if you need to. So here for the logo mark, and I'm gonna do it just for the sake of this demo, there's the logo mark, it added that in. The logo type, select logo type. 
And then here is the tagline, and I included a tagline. Now watch this. I included the tagline here, but oh, I forgot to select the O. It says an amazing log, which is not exactly what I wanted to say. So this is really easy. You just click on the little trash icon, then you can go back in and select everything. That's one thing. If this logo was grouped in the previous, like if I go over to my other tab, these items are all grouped. Well, when you go in the new tab, these items are no, long, no longer necessarily grouped. So do that and set tagline. Actually, once you set it, now they are grouped, but beforehand they're not. So you have to make sure you highlight everything. Now, you have your full logo, your logo mark, your logo type, and your tagline. It's a simple matter of saying make print logos or make web logos. Now, just for the fun of it, I'm going to start a stopwatch here. You can follow along with the time in the video, but I'm going to start at the same time that I click here. And there you go. It took three, three and a half seconds, and it created 42 different variations of the logo. Now it has the top one. If I, I zoom in, here's your main logo. This is the one I started off with, the CMYK. So it created, and we're doing print, so it created a CMYK version. It created a black and white, uh, a reverse one, then an inverted one, which makes the tagline and the logo type white, but it keeps the icon in color, a grayscale, and here are the uncoded PMS color and the coded PMS color. And if I go in and I select these, you'll see that this blue is Pantone 651. This is uncoded. If I select this one, it has a different color, which is Pantone 277. And that's because if you know how uncoded and coded colors work, that often one color is not good enough for both. You, sometimes you have to pick a different Pantone color depending on the paper usage. So de depending on your your client, they may request that. So this does a really good job of selecting the different colors. Now, one thing here is you'll notice that there are some duplication. Here, when you have the inverse and the reverse, the, here it makes sense, but here, the logo and the tagline, well, these are identical. So there's no sense for me having two files of the same thing. So I can just go in, select that, and delete it. Select that and delete it. Same thing over here. Select that and delete it. Now these two are different, so are these. Now maybe because of the way this grayscale looks, I don't want the grayscale, so I'm going to erase those, but I'm going to leave it in for the purpose of this video. Now, now's the part, this, this is what you look at and it tells you here, this is your last chance to adjust your print logos before exporting. So you can go in, you can double check your, your Pantone colors, you can make sure everything looks good, and then we're going to ex export them into, well, it was 42. Now it's going to be 39 different logos because I deleted three. So I'm going to start my stopwatch again. It took three and a half seconds to create all of these. Now let's see about actually exporting the files. Oh, so now it's asking you client name. I've already named it while wow company. And where do I put the files? I already have the destination. So I'm going to click open, create logo package. So here is the folder on my desktop or on my computer where it's uh, being generated. And you could see all these folders being generated. So it's going through here, creating all the different ones. So let's just open up, say, there's the logo, there's the full color version, and it's the print. So logo full color print. Now it's going through, and as it goes through, you'll see some more stuff being added here. So imagine how much time this would take you to do one at a time. There, it just added, there's the one color. So now there's the full color logo, there's the one color logo. And it's doing the same with all these other things. And you can follow along here as it's going through. And now it's down to here. So it does them one at a time and you just sit back and you let it work. And it's organizing them in this nicely organized way. So logo, full color, print, inverted, print. And it's, it's adding all these different things in here. So it's all the different formats. So if a client wants the full logo, they go in here and they can find exactly what they want. 
Now you open the print, there's the CMYK, and there's the AI, the EPS, and the PDF. So you can see that everything, very nice hierarchy, very easy for the client to understand. There's the grayscale, there's the inverted, the one color, the reverse, and the same goes for everything. So there's the logo and the tagline. See, and there's the Pantone, same thing with the logo. There's the Pantone colors. So it says there's the unco uh, Pantone uncoded. It hasn't started the coded. Still working on those. Oh, there, now we just added. And it's finishing off. And now I'll press stop. That took, including the part where I had to name it and select the folder, that took two minutes and 23 seconds according to my stopwatch. And we just created all of those. So if I go back to here, it created all of these. And more. So look at all the files that it's created. Now, you come back into Logo Package Express and it says, congratulations, you're done with the print logos. Do you want to finish or now do you want to make the web logos? Well, why not? We need them. So let's do the web logos. So it does the same thing now, but you'll notice there's a lot fewer of them. So the web logo, now it's RGB instead of CMYK. And there are a few things that maybe you'll think, well, I don't need a black and white one for web, so delete that. Or I definitely don't need the grayscale. So let's delete the grayscale one. There, I'm not going to use those. Now, the same thing applies here. I don't need that one. And I don't need that because they're duplicates. Same thing here. But let's just say we need the rest of this. And OK, so now export the web logo. Same thing. It's going into the same place create logo package. Now I started my stopwatch on that one again. So the first one was about two minutes and 20 seconds. Now, if you open up logo, full color, now you see that there's digital and print. So the digital has the AI, the JPEG and the PNG. And then there's the print that had CMYK, Pantone and Pantone. So you see how simple this is and how well organized everything is. Oh, there, it's done. Better stop that. So that took about 33 seconds. So if you add that on, it created all of those logos, which uh, I didn't actually calculate. I think there was 39 plus uh, so about another roughly 30, 20 here, uh, 24. Anyways, so we're looking at 50, 60 different logos that it created in less than three minutes from the time I clicked it. So that is what it does. Again, you look over at the folder and everything is nicely organized. Logo, logo mark, logo with tagline, logo type, logo type with tagline, and then the tagline itself. Now, I showed you in the original one that I had two logos. Well, what do you do here? All you do is you just say, okay, I'm finished. And it says, do you want to begin a new logo package? If I say yes, it asks, do you want to save changes? So you can save changes to this page itself if you want. Now you can, I'm not going to bother, so I'll say no. Now it's just asking you, select the next one. So now I would select that. And the difference is, is, is when I saved them, I would have saved the first set into a folder called stacked or horizontal or, or not horizontal, vertical. And then this one here, I would do it in a folder called horizontal or landscape or portrait, whatever. And you would do the same thing. Set logo and it creates it. And then you go through the whole process. So you see how easy that is. Now, I just want to try something here. This is the Resourceful Designer logo. If I choose it, now there's no tagline in anything, so let's set logo. Now, I'm going to select the logo mark. Now, I want to create, say, just web logos. And here's all the different variations of the logo that I may need. Now, I don't like the logo type just by itself. It just doesn't make sense for it to be justified left like that. It's okay when it's the full logo, but 
I'm going to delete all of these. So I don't need any of those. And then I could look and see, okay, do I like this? Yeah, no, I'm not going to use a grayscale. So I will delete those. And that leaves me with these different variations. And now I can export. So you see how easy it is just deleting the ones that you don't need and then just exporting the ones that you do. And it doesn't matter if it's a, a, a one color, a two color, a three color, it will work for you. This plugin, you saw it took two minutes and well, let's say just under three minutes to export close to 30, 40, 50 files in about three minutes. Now, how long would that have taken you to do? So that's the demo I wanted to share. That is the Logo Package Express, a great extension for Adobe Illustrator. I can kick myself for not coming up with the idea myself, and I don't know why it took so long for somebody to finally come up with this idea for Adobe Illustrator. It just seems like a no-brainer. It should have been in there a long time ago. So congratulations to Michael on your, your product here. This is amazing, and I hope you do very well. And you listening or watching this video, uh, if this is something you're interested in, head on over to resourcefuldesigner.com slash the logo package and purchase yours. So there you have it. That was the logo package express. Now, if that looked like something that you are interested in, head on over to resourcefuldesigner.com slash the logo package, where you can make your purchase today. Now, as an added bonus, if you're watching this in the first week that it's released, the logo package is on sale for 20% off. So hurry up. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you would hit subscribe on the channel. I'm planning on releasing many more videos in the future that deal with other resources that are useful to designers such as you. And if you are running a design business and you want even more advice and tips and resources, then why don't you subscribe to the Resourceful Designer podcast anywhere you can find podcasts. And if you're not sure, at the website resourcefuldesigner.com slash subscribe, list all the different ways you can subscribe to the podcast, including downloading the app for both iOS and Android. So thank you very much. I am Mark Decote, wishing you all the best with your design business and reminding you to stay creative.